Now this is the loom that I had brought out to my brother's place and my sister-in-law was reweaving from some old rugs. Well, she got those done yesterday. So I picked up the loom and you know, the idea was to use up the warp that was on her. Well, it still has quite a little warp on. So I'm going making about a half dozen of these smaller, what they are is blue jeans and a flannel shirt mixed together. Uh, this is the ball I'm working on. I used to do quite a few of them. I got a whole pile of them here. But it's like this, you know, where it's, and I make like a three foot rug. You know, throw two by three. They're an easy sell. But it's a good way to use this warp up. And I'm doing them now because my sister is going to be here for a few days. And, you know, I used to do all these shows, these art shows, where I would sell the rugs. And now she is doing the shows, which is nice because I don't have to travel. But she sells the rugs that me and mom make too, though I haven't been making a lot lately. But I know she's getting short, so for the next show, I'm going to have to get these done so she has some more to bring along. But like I say, these are easy sell. And it's actually, you know, I, named, I made one, then I leave a gap, leave the warp in, then I make another one. I'll just keep doing that. I'll make, like I say, a half dozen of them before I take them off. Because they roll up underneath as you leave. And make a creak. But somebody had asked uh, to show what a bad rug looked like. Because, uh, you know, people, they sometimes have bad experiences. They'll, they'll buy rugs like in a Menards or, you know, where you buy these 99 centers that are really horrible, horrible things. But they really get burned on a rug like that. And then they're hesitant to buy a decent rug because they don't know the difference. Or they wouldn't have bought one of those in the first place. But somebody asked if I would show kind of what the difference is between a, a well-made rug and a, a bad one. And I was in a thrift store one day and I picked up this animal. Now, this is actually, it's an import, but for an import, it's better than the majority of them. Because a lot of times it's just horrible scraps of fabric that they're using. You know, there'll be, it's all polyester stuff with, uh, there'll be like tinsel in there, there'll be everything in there, just a, a mashup of, of all kinds of fabric. And then a lot of times there, the end is not knotted. This one is actually knotted. But a lot of those, the end will just be zigzag, stitched, you know, and they just, they fall apart right away. They're, they're just really no good. But this one is made out of some kind of a stretchy, it's like a t-shirt material, which is something you have to have practice to weave well with. You could do it, but it takes practice. Uh, this person didn't have the practice. You can see the edge. That's where you can always tell on a rug. You look, it goes in, it goes out, it goes all over. You know, here's really fat, here's pulled in. One end of the rug is actually an inch wider than the other. You know, they, they're just, it's just not well made. Plus, just being out of this synthetic stuff, this would be a nightmare on a, like a vinyl floor. <laughs> be like a skating rink. And even just material-wise, besides being, you know, this horrible stretchy nylon stuff that is just a misery to work with, unless I can do it, but you have to know what you're doing to be able to do it. 
the warp that is used on a lot of the imports is this two ply stuff. So it's a very thin warp. You know, I don't know of anybody in this country who's making with two ply, though it is available. But most of the warp that you find, and this is the old Maysville stuff, that's actually four plies twisted together. It's just much stronger than that two ply is just weak, you know. And if your warp goes, you're ready to shot. But you see it very commonly on, on the import rugs, the, the really thin warp. But the whole thing is just flimsy, uh, you know. If you hold it up to the light, it's like a screen door. You can you can see right through it, you know. <laughs> and the problem then is, rug lays on the floor. The idea is it's supposed to catch dirt. The problem is with these, it, the dirt will fall right through. You lift the rug up, and you'll see lines where the rug had been laying, where the dirt fell between every section. You know, they're just really a misery. But, like I said, it burns people on rugs. Uh, a good rug will trap the dirt in the rug, but you can take it outside and shake it out. It doesn't let the dirt fall through. But, now this is done on a two harness, using the two-ply warp. Done poorly. Uh, poor materials. <laughs> you know, really... If I was going to do this stuff, I'd be tempted to redo this rug just to show you what this rug could be like. But what I would do would set my my warp at a double sleigh so that it's double strings that are spaced a little further apart that works better with this kind of material. I could make a good rug out of it, but it would probably be four inches shorter when I got done because I pack them so much tighter. At least four inches shorter. So what I would tend to do on something like this, I would like drop the two outside sections of the loom, not use those, make it so it would be a slightly narrower, like an inch narrower, that way I could maintain the length. You know, I've had to do that on other rugs that are rewoven. But that's just but this this is what people buy and then they think, oh I can't. I can't stand rugs like that. Well, that's why. But if you get a good rug, just for the heck of it, I should reweave that one though, just to show you what, what you can do with that material. But if somebody is starting out, that's a horrible material to start out with because of the stretch. Because the problem is, when you go, when you pull a piece through, what people tend to do is to pull, pull tight. Well, then what happens, you start pulling in then your beater comes back and starts stretching the outside strings. So you don't do that. You, you, it takes practice to maintain a good edge, but you have to. So you end up with that, like where one end is an inch wider than the other. But it is a matter of practice. You know, like I always said, you have to make some bad rugs to learn how to make good ones. What we used to refer to as the church basement rugs, the rugs that were, somebody would make that were totally unsellable. Well, you put them in a church basement, they'd use them in the kitchen. You know. But you only want to make so many church basement rugs. You got to sometimes make something that's sellable. But this is, like I say, that old union loom that were made like back in the 20s so it's getting to be close to 100 years old i was going to actually set up my old i got that one that's over 200 years old i was going to set that up and make some rugs and then i got the call from her that she was finishing up another thing you know like i say if you're starting out don't start out with the, the real stretchy material because it's going to be an aggravation for you you are going to make church basement rugs but Another thing you really want to avoid, unless you've got a heavy loom, like these old unions are pretty solid, is blue jeans. Because blue jeans, it takes a good solid loom to stand up to the packing that you need 
you know, you really need to bang it with boutines. And some of the newer looms are made a little light for that. They really can't take the pound and they'll come apart on you. So a nice material, well wool is nice, but not a lot of people do it though I do. Um, corduroy weaves very well. If you get a, like this is all flannel. That weaves very nice, all flannel does. You know, you need a softer material, but not something that'll stretch. You'll have better results with that. Then I'm gonna get these made and I'll, I'll show you what they look like when they get done. Because I can weave, I, I normally weave about a rug an hour at this size. So it goes pretty fast, really. Because when I used to set up at shows and do it, I'd, I'd weave at least a half dozen rugs, sometimes eight or nine rugs in a day. Usually, people wanted to buy the one you were working on, so they were usually sold before I even got them done, so I'd have to do them quick and take them off and tie them so they could take them. At least this way, you know, like I said, I just leave a gap and keep going, so I'll make, I can keep weaving until it starts interfering with my knees, you know, when it gets too close, you know, and you got to start moving back to avoid it. But I will uh, make a half dozen or so and I'll show you what they look like. You know, mate, I might reweave that old brute. Just to show you what the rug can look like. Though, <laughs> I, I, I should take a before picture and an after picture. So, so. But I've done that for years. If I run into a, a bad rug in a thrift store. I'll buy it so I can tear it apart to see where it failed and almost always it, it's due to the uh, the cheap warp and and just not being packed tight enough. You know you shouldn't be able to damn near stick your finger through there. You know it's just but unless you know you know and the only ones who really know are people who weave. Though I actually have sold rugs to weavers, <laughs> you know, because because I can do like the denim and stuff that they couldn't do on their their lighter looms. So I have sold quite a few rugs to other weavers, but it's because they can appreciate what I'm doing. I have a reputation for the rugs that I make. Well, like I say, these are going to go with my sister, and eventually I might start making them to sell online again. I don't want to do shows again; that's more work than I want to do. But I might do some online sales. Because I got plenty of material and I got several looms that need a little exercise.